Evening, everybody. It's 620 on uh, this Monday, the 18th of September, and this is your closing comment, video number 1913 for this Monday afternoon. Okay, so let's get some of the headlines. Today would be perfect as what if they gave a market and nobody came or gave a crap. Uh, Dow up six dollars. 0.02%. NASDAQ up $1.90.01. S&P up $3.21. Seven-tenths of a percent. The only two that were vaguely interesting because they have been the market leaders, not in specific moves, but directionally. Those were the biggest loser of the day. The Russell down $12.73 or 0.69% and the Dow Jones Transports down 86.15 or 0.56. I've been mentioning this for a whole week that these two are underperforming and it would only make sense considering that interest rates and the availability to borrow money is especially damaging to uh, the Russell, who is made up of smaller companies, kind of the small caps, um, and they don't have the access that any of these big names have. And so they end up doing business with their local or regional bank. And as I've been mentioning also for about six months, we are getting into the crowding out of uh, new issuance. The government is crowding out, trying to uh, finance new number today, $33 trillion debt. So uh, that's going to cause a, a problem for the market. Uh, Instacart, which this morning at two minutes after 10 said they would have an IPO price shortly. It's now 622 and we don't have it yet. Um, A little bit of background here. Instacart filed 16 months ago in a confidential filing about their intention to go public. At the time, the company was valued 400% above the current valuation. They also dramatically cut back. I mean, this is a fairly big company. Um, And when I say fairly big, we'll call it, I don't know, I guess they're putting out about... um, a valuation of $9 billion. But they're only issuing 22 million shares, I believe, is the number, which is 3% of the valuation. And so all of a sudden, everybody is talking about the fact that it's oversubscribed. Well, of course it's oversubscribed. It's been cut and cut and cut again, on valuation. Um, So it looks like 28 to 30, but as I said, we still don't have it. We also don't have one on um, KVYO, the advertising firm. It was supposed to be marketing firm. Um, And it was originally 25 to 27. Now it's 27 to 29. This one also a no-show on the announcement side. And the one company that everybody was looking at as such a great guide to how strong the IPO market was going to be, Arm, priced at 51 uh, in the first two days, had a low of 55.54 and a high of 69. Um, today, new low 55.02, down 
down from, pardon me, that was the new low 5502, down from, as I said, 69. And um, the last on it, let me just get you a fresh quote because it's obviously still trading. $58 down 275 or 4.53 was the close today. It's actually eight or 10 cents lower right now in extended hours. So, um, you know, my personal feeling is as my personal feeling always is. They're shoveling a load of crap on you about how strong this market is and uh, how much demand there is for these stocks. Well, you know, if uh, I could buy Apple for 75% down from where it was three months ago, I'd probably be a buyer there too, especially if they were only selling 3% of the company. Okay, so uh, Tesla, you know, there was a horrendous article in Barron's about how four and GM uh, have a major problem because they are having to spend exorbitant amounts of money just to stay even in the EV business and how they're not going to make any money on it. Um, I remember um, Dump Kramer uh, being wildly bullish on Ford. I mean, wildly bullish. Um, the stock had just come down from a new high of 25.87 and uh, had come down and made a little bit of a bottom around 18.90. And he was just unbelievably bullish at 20, 20 and a half. Um, today down at 12.33, I don't hear him talking about it. Oh, except what a great guy Jim Farley is. You know, Jim this, Jim that. Eh, you know, that's typical Kramer for you. Uh, but on the day, uh, as I said, Ford, 12.33, down 28 cents, 2%. GM, 33.34, down 61 cents, 1.8%. And Stellantis, 18.94 down 31 cents or 1.6. These are not huge declines, especially for three companies that are about as far apart as you can get on negotiations with their union. But hey, what do I know? What I do know is that Tesla now has denied that the Wall Street Journal report uh, that I mentioned this morning about them being in talks with the Saudis to build cars there while the Saudis would give um, Tesla access to their um, metals, their strategic metals uh, that they mine there um, for the batteries. Um, the stock, though, was also downgraded. Um, Goldman Sachs lowered next year's numbers. Um, not much. I think they were looking for 350. They lowered it to 340 a share. Never mind that this company sells 60% of the EVs sold in the U.S. 60%. So. Uh, Tesla had kind of a rough day, and uh, let me see, give you an up to the minute, and it is trading 265.87, and that is down $8.51, and um, that's pretty much towards the low of the day. The low was 263.76. Um, AVGR, Avenger. Avenger uh, is a biopharma, I guess, that has had some tremendous uh, response in um, 
le in in dissolving lesions. Um, unfortunately, the stock has been such a loser. Uh, on Wednesday or Thursday of uh, last week, they reversed the stock, one for fifteen, uh, which and they had done it in uh, March of last year, one for twenty, and so that gives it uh, an adjusted price of roughly forty-two thousand dollars a share. I take it back. There was another one for 10. So one for 10 in 2019, one for 20 in 2022, and one for 15 last week. So uh, that would be 100 shares is 10, 100, uh, 10 shares is two, and one for 15 means you basically own one share of an $8 stock with a high of 42,000. I mean, it's great news. Um, and uh, the stock uh, was as high as eight and a half today. Uh, the last on it at um, regular hours was 607, and that was up $1.44 or 46%. Um, in late trading, though, it has been higher. Uh, let's just pull this up. Uh, it got as high as. $12.05. The last is $8.20. And $8.20 is up a little over 4, 406, which is just short of 100%. So not bad news there. Um, the uh, Tomorrow we have uh, housing starts and permits. And let's get back to the chart on the screen. I no, everybody knows what this is. And again, it had a higher high, higher low. Uh, it's the oil, and it did get up as high today as 91.36. Right now, it's trading 91.05. This is clearly a higher high, a higher low. Uh, the question is, is it going to make a higher high above that 91.36? So we'll have to see. Um, also, the grains that I wrote about over the weekend and discussed this morning, all of them broke to the downside. Uh, the corn, which was one of the weaker ones, continued lower after trying, after closing, you know, pretty much at the low again. Uh, today, it was down another 460 down here to the uh, 471 and a half area. Uh, the soybeans, which were the only ones that were still trading above their 200 day MA, also crushed down by 23 and a half. And that one had been uh, on, closing on the low. Oh, I take it back. It's not this one, uh, it's the weekly on this. The only one above the 200 week and it, you know, closed right at the bottom. Uh, you know, we're going to get to that round number 1300 awfully quickly from 1316 and three quarters. And the wheat, which has, you know, been a debacle now for uh, about three months. Also tried to reverse last week down to uh, 570, a slightly lower low than this 573 and change, closed on the high and then this morning had a lower high and closed on the low and down 13 cents a bushel. So, you know, 13 cents is not, doesn't mean, may not seem like a lot, but it is two and 2.15%. Okay, I just see a flash. $30 is the Instacart price. And uh, as I said, it was originally 26 to 28. And then it, they moved it up to 28 to 30. And that's right where they priced it. Okay, let's just see if there's anything else. I think that the um, gold and silver are getting ready to move here again. Uh, I would probably use the GDX. Uh, 
if you've listened to me or read any of my work, you'll see that I have absolutely called out this move on the basis of the fact that after each of these highs, this was a new all-time high, this was just short of that, and uh, this most recent one was higher than this, but lower than the all-time high. Uh, this fell $416 an ounce before turning back up. This one fell $460 an ounce before turning back up. This one had a high, this run had a high of 2085, and the low is 1900. So that's 185. So it's less than half of any of the moves. The MACD and the RSI are definitely rolling back to the upside. Um, open interest has fallen off a cliff, which is typical for when they get ready to move gold. The professionals have squeezed everybody out of the market. And that's why I think we're going to see it higher sooner. Uh, Apple was recommended by Bernstein up $2.96 or 1.7%. Uh, last week, everybody was talking about uh, how there was no demand and there wasn't going to be enough manufacturing and how poorly it was going to be. And today... Uh, Bernstein came out and raised guidance based on exactly 180 degrees opposite what everybody was saying last week, which is demand is huge. It's huge for the higher end cameras um, and phones. And um, what can I say? It takes all kinds. Okay, so. Uh, and that gas up a little, gold up a little, silver up a little, Bitcoin, which was up to 27550 came back down, closed 26885 and that was up 410 The dollar was down $0.13, cents, and the bonds were slightly higher after being lower this morning. I'll be back first thing in the morning. Have a good one.